Hi guys. I'm working on a hat for someone. Let me plug my mic in because I forgot to do that. Make it where you guys can hear me better. Sorry, I forget about the mic. Okay. So I'm working on a hat for um, left-handed body art. This is one I stitched out already. So in case you want to know the process for this, she has a logo and she sent it to me and I send it to a digitizer that turns it into the thread, the way the thread's going to lay. Um, and depending on the logo, they have different costs. This one was 30 and her other logo is a little simpler. So it was 25, but that's about an average cost for a fairly simple one. If you get into more detail, they can be, um, like I'm doing another one that's off of a picture and it's up in the $75 range. So, um, just to give you an idea, you can embroider almost anything if they can take the picture and they turn it into a drawing first and then they turn it into the file for um, the embroidery machine. So um, I just got a new machine. It's a Brother SE 1900 and you can do lots of cool stuff on it, which I've been playing with already. You might see, have seen it posted. and. Um, so we're going to put that image on a hat for her. If I can get my pins open. Sometimes a knife's better. Okay, so this is a little different video. I usually do all resin stuff and epoxy stuff, but today we're going to do this. So to start, we start with a hoop and um, we're going to put some stabilizer on it. So we're going to start with, um, it's a sheet of stabilizer that goes on the back. embroidery sta stabilizer. This is tearaway. So we start with that and then we're going to add some um, sticky stabilizer to it to help hold our hat down. So this one is stabilizer on one side and it's sticky on this side and that's going to help hold the hat in the, in the frame. I'm going to put this down so you can see what I'm working on. The hoop is um, kind of tricky, but I'm told the more that you do it, the better it gets. <laughs> you guys just slowly fell. Sorry. I forgot to tighten the button. So there you go. Okay. So this sheet... Um, we're going to put it right there. It doesn't cover the whole thing. There's a little gap here and a little gap here. But we don't sew on the hat in those areas. So this one, though, is long enough to go the whole way. And we put the paper side up because that's the sticky side. And this is um, Sulky Sticky Plus. And it tells you, in case you forget, that you hoop this side up. So we're just going to lay that right on top of there. I'm going to loosen this screw a bit more. Okay, and then we just work with it until we get it, the paper in the hoop. And then we tighten it. And 
I have to tell you, I'm by no means an authority on this. I'm new at it. And this is just the first stuff that I've learned. So that's what I'm sharing with you. This gets hard to hand tighten, so they give you a little screwdriver to help tighten that, which is nice. And I'm just making sure my paper's nice and tight in there and that the hoop is set on there good because I don't want it to pop off while we have a hat on it. So it's nice and tight. If you're putting fabric directly in here, if I understand correctly, you don't want to make it too tight because it will um, make your fabric um, have, they call it burning but it's where you pull it so tight that it stretches the fabric. So what I'm doing with this paper is I'm just getting a hold of where there's a bubble here and I tore the paper. And now I'm just gonna tear that all off. And that exposes that sticky part. It's not like super sticky, so uh, you don't want to touch it and make it lose its stickiness too much because we need that hat to stick down on there. And I actually did something wrong already. I have to take this back apart because I forgot to put my hat attachment in it. That's what happens when you're doing it live. You get to see all the mistakes. Hi, Angie. Hi, Gabriella. Hi, Jessica. With the hat attachment, we don't use the bottom. We use the, um, just the hat attachment. Sorry, I forgot about that. So I'm just gonna turn my paper a little bit the other way. And we're gonna raise, this little clamp here on the side comes up and that's what holds the brim of the hat. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of the sticky off. And then that way it's just sticky everywhere. So we're going to just kind of tuck that under there and now you see it covers the whole thing and the sticky on top of it. And then we're going to put the hoop around that. That's what I get for working on a project when I just get up from a nap. Huh? brain not fully engaged, I guess. And it is tricky. I had to use, I could use like four hands to get this on, but we'll get it. Okay, I'm just gonna start tightening that back up. Struggle is real, people. I have two different hat ones, and I haven't been able to try one because I didn't have the right size hoop for it to go in. 
but I just got it today, but I didn't want to try something new on a project that I haven't used yet. Okay. Make sure that's pulled tight. Get the wrinkles out of it. In the area where the hat's going to be. And this wrinkle is going to come out when I put the brim in there because that's where it's coming from. The machine I wanted comes with this nice um, round thing that you put the hat in and it goes in a big machine. That machine's $15,000 and I couldn't do that one. So we're doing the next best thing. So the hat she chose, um, I got at Hobby Lobby. It's a ponytail cap and it's distressed. So, um, you know, it has these little distressed marks in it. And it has in the back the ponytail holder. So that's what she chose. We're gonna start by taking the cardboard piece out of in here. And we're gonna get some painter's tape and fold this back out of the way so that it doesn't get embroidered on. We just start by pulling it back where we can, just trying to get it out of the way so the embroider machine doesn't grab it and pull it in. you don't want that little flap to be sewn down. And some hats are easier than others to be honest and we have to kind of flatten this bill out to go in the, the hoop. So you can see it's kind of a struggle to do these but, but they are very doable. I've already done some so just kind of contorting the hat all over the place and ultimately what we're going to get is a flat spot where we embroider so that um, we can get it nice and tight and flat on there and hopefully keep all this stuff out of our way. Okay. So we'll bring our thing back over here and that'll stay down better once it's in the clamp. So the way I did this last time and I found it to be easier is to actually um, take this top piece off and then squish it back down. If you guys embroider and you want um, to know where to get this, this one I got on Amazon. Okay, so we're just going to put that hat right there, and we're, I'm just trying to center it so I make sure that um, this middle stripe, there's marks on my hoop, and I'm just trying to make sure that middle stripe lines up with the marks on the hoop so that when I flatten it, it and put the embroider on it, it stays where it's supposed to. Okay, now comes the real fun part. Okay, so what we need is for this portion right here to be as flat as possible and lined up so that this is with the center of the hoop. So I'm gonna start by undoing it and we're just gonna start by trying to line that up. So 
So that little uh, thing on the top of the hat is perfectly lined up with the center of that um, little arrow in the middle to tell you where the center is. I'm gonna take a pin way up there and I'm gonna pin that down in a couple places so that that doesn't move. Sorry if I get out of the camera. Um, I'm paying attention to the hat and not, not the camera so much. I just want to get this up so it's, it's pinned in place, but it won't hit the needle because um, I don't want to break a needle or anything. going to leave these tags on but that's kind of a pain so I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. I'll just give them to her with the hat. They're kind of flopping around where I don't want them. Okay now I'm going to come over here to the sides and I'm going to pull that tight and I'm going to pin back in here to hold that flat. They call this method floating, um, if you need to look it up to see how to do it any differently than I'm doing or other ideas. It's called floating, and you can float everything, like t-shirts, um, people do like lace and all kinds of stuff this way. And I'm making sure that pin comes back on top because I don't want it to get hung up on the machine and stop the arm of the machine when it's working or anything like that. Okay. So I think I'll stick one more pin down here to try to make sure that stays as flat as possible. Once stitches start going in it, it's not going to go anywhere, but I just don't want it to pucker anywhere. And I want to make sure I'm, I'm looking to make sure that's not turned up. You can kind of see that under there. I want to make sure that's not turned up and in where it's going to get stitched. I just don't want the sewing machine needle hitting the that um, pin because I don't I don't want any damage to my machine. Well too tight to get in there so we're just going to go with this okay so the next thing we do I'm going to move you so you can see the machine a little better I might have to move my whole camera hang on I hate ne sewing needle or pins. They fall out and they get all over everywhere, so I'm trying to be careful. Sorry. Okay, let's see. Can you see? I think you can see that. So the next thing we're going to do is these hooks hook onto this bar. You don't want to move these bars. Um, so we have to work the hat into where it needs to be. So I'm going to do that by going behind. And while I'm doing this, I'm looking at my bobbin thread. Um, I have a full one because I just loaded it. So um, I won't have to stop in the middle of the project because that's kind of a pain. So what I'm doing is looking for the place to put this in that's easiest on my foot um, so that I don't put pressure on it. And working, just working it up into where it's going to be sewing and then we're going to snap this in place okay um, let's see if I can get you over here so you can watch what I do
I think you can kind of see the screen this way. So I have a USB stick in the side here that already has her logo on it. And every time it comes on, it lets you know that that carriage is going to move and to keep your fingers out of it because it moves like that. Okay, so we're going to we're going to select um, USB. And I have her different sizes in here, so I'm, I'm not sure which one's the small one. So we're going to see this one's the small one. So I'm going to hit set. And I don't need to edit it at all. And we're going to trace where it's going to go um, at the size it is now to see if I need to do anything to it. So we're just going to trace this. I hope you guys can see that because I'm backwards to the camera. So that's the area that it's going to sew in. So I actually want to move that up a little bit. Um, so we're going to go, so we're going to go back, oh stop it, I'm hitting the wrong button. We're going to go back. push too many buttons so it's doing everything I wanted it to do. We're going to go back and we're going to edit it. Um, we're going to size it. I think we're going to make it a tiny bit bigger. And we're going to move it up. Okay, and let's see how that works. So I like that because it's right below those little dots and I think it'll sew just fine everywhere that it's showing right now. So, now we'll put our thread in. Let's make sure you can see again. So the first color um, it calls for is um, the like magenta color. And um, the lady that did my pattern did it in a different brand of thread than I have. So um, I had to translate these into the thread that I have. So I'm looking for this magenta color here, number 107. And I'm just going to thread the machine real quick. These kind of bobbins take this little, or these kind of, um, <coughs> excuse me, thread things take these little adapters. If you don't put that in there, the thread gets wound up wrong and it screws up your tension. So we're going to put that in. And then we have this little cap that goes on top of the thread and that keeps it from getting caught as well. And then we're just going to thread the machine here. And I'm kind of trying to do this so I keep my hands out of the way so you can see. Everybody complains about catching this number six one um, on their machines because it's actually really difficult to get it in there. It's a little like bar right next to the needle and there's not much room for your fingers to work. So if you know of a tool or something like that that helps that, let me know. So this is a self um, threading one. Once I get the thread this far, I just push this button down and you'll see this leg comes down and it threads it. 
So that's all threaded, which is nifty for me because I am blind as a bat and was worried about threading that needle all the time, but I don't have to. So now I'm just having a second look, making sure everything's where I want it because I don't want to put my fingers in here once this starts. And um, you can stop the machine and stuff like that. It'll pick off where you left off, but I just don't want to mess up the hat. So I like just doing a double check. So everything's tight, everything's down. It's clipped in good, my threads run. Um, so we're gonna just start by pressing the start button and watch it go. This first color um, says it will take nine minutes. The whole project's gonna take 29 minutes. Um, we have 12 thread changes. So we're only using like five colors, but we have to go back and forth with colors. So we'll just go ahead and get this started. So it's already mad at me because it got caught up here. So I have to stop it and I'm going to cut my thread and I'm going to re-thread this because somewhere along the line I missed something. So the tension was off and I think it looks okay so I think I can just start where it took off, left off, but let's get this rewound back up in here. It has so many things to catch that if you miss catching one, it won't do your tension correctly. Oh, that feels better. That gave me some tension on that line. And then we'll re-thread. And green lights, foot down. So let's try again. So it sews some base stitches to start with to give it some structure. And then it goes back over and fills them in so that it looks fully embroidered. If you guys are thinking about getting an embroidery machine, um, I don't have a lot of advice on them because this is my very first one. I did tons of research beforehand though, and this was the one that I liked. Um, I thought it was just an embroidery machine. I didn't even realize when I got it, it's actually a sewing machine also. It comes with everything you need to use it as you know a, a regular sewing machine. I don't have any interest in sewing, so for me, I'm just gonna use it as an embroidery machine. But it had extremely good reviews for um, what it is. And I bought it because I found out you could get all the hat attachments, which is what I really wanted to make. I can absolutely see the value in having one that's like a six needle um, or more, 10 needles because of the color changes, that would be really nice to just be able to load your machine and push a button and walk away. But um, that's okay. I got, I got a machine that's working for me, so we'll just go sell a bunch of these hats and earn enough to get the big machine. And, and honestly, I don't think 
like this one's gonna take 29 minutes. I don't think that's too bad for a project like this. If I'm not recording like this, I can walk away from this and go, you know, do vinyl on t-shirts or other projects or whatever. As long as I hear it working in the background, I know everything's fine. If you end up watching this on, whether it's Facebook or I'm gonna load it on YouTube when I'm done, if you end up watching it and have tips for me, I, I appreciate tips. Um, I'm not telling you I'm an expert in this at all. This is, you know, one of the first few hats I've done. I, I am smart enough to know that I can learn the digitizing software, but I haven't learned it yet and so I'm, going ahead and paying digitizers that do this every day, all day to do it because I want really nice patterns. Um, but eventually I'll learn that and be able to offer that as a service as well. I think we have four thread colors in this. 12 changes, but four colors. Her butterfly is the magenta color, and the eyeball that's in there is like a purple, and then she has white and black in the writing and highlights. I know Erin's out to dinner. Um, this is her hat, but I went ahead and tagged her so that um, she can watch it later. Just a fun fact, this um, pattern that we're doing has a total of 13,625 stitches. What you've watched so far, so far is about 2,400 stitches.
that noise that you're hearing is the um, the sticky stuff where it's bent underneath. It makes noise on the the deck of the sewing machine. This is the lowest part of where it's going. So when the hat comes back up, that'll be right down in the brim of it. She wanted it um, as large as she could get it on the hat and still look good. So we're going all the way down up to those little um, air holes that are in the hat. And that puts the design right on, on your forehead instead of the top of your head. So it's now cut my thread and it's time for the color change. So we're going to pull this one off. And it lets me know that the next color is white. And the white's only going to go for a minute or less. Um, so this is where we get busy with color changes. Just going to pull some out. Sometimes it takes longer to change the thread than it does to stitch what it wants to stitch. Again, if anybody has tips and tricks, let me know. Because I'm new at this. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm an expert at it. And any tips that you have for me greatly appreciated. Okay, we'll load that needle. And I just like to pull it back to make sure it's backwards. And then we're going to hit start. doing the white part of the eye right now. And then I think it jumps over and does the other side. And then I think our next color is purple for the eye. Just gonna keep that white out here because we're gonna use it again in a second. See if I can find the end of my purple.
guess it doesn't matter what side it's on, but. Again, this is what we're making to put on there. Um, just a smaller version of it for a hat. Okay, so the rest of the color changes are all back and forth between black and white, and that's to do the highlights in her design as well as the um, her writing. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one away. They get, I have these neat little toppers that go over the thread. It's supposed to keep helping, help keep them from unraveling, but they're cool looking, but I don't know that it works. Okay, so the next color it wants is black. So we'll get some of that going. I know I need to order more of those because I'm gonna lose that. It's going to fall on my floor and be lost in the abyss. This is the first machine I've gotten that you don't have to deal with the tension on it, um, which makes me happy because Every machine I've ever had for sewing, the reason I hate sewing is the tension. So as long as my stuff's threaded right, it seems to just be, just do it. I love that. It's gonna stop here in a second. My thread is caught. I've seen it before it stops, so hold on. We'll see if we can get it fixed. The thread got wound onto itself. I don't think there's a way to fix that. So we're gonna have to redo it. There we go. So what happened is the thread wound onto itself and basically tied itself on there. And I saw that it was stuck and it was gonna stop anyway, so I stopped it. I'd rather do that than not because that probably just saved a broken needle. The tension on that gets so much that it pulls the needle sideways and it snaps the needle. And I know that because I did it several times the first day I did it. until I figured out what I was doing wrong. But what I like about this is see how we're this far along? You just, it takes off where you left off and if you miss some stitches for some reason, you can go back. So it's not liking something still. So this is a good opportunity to show you what happens. So I'm gonna cut my stitch. I'm gonna pull this out again. And it's telling me to check and re-thread the upper. But even though I'm doing that, I'm gonna pull this off and have a look at the back to make sure that the bobbin didn't um, get all wound up in the back. So we're gonna carefully lift this up off of the track and I'm going to work it out like I worked it in being careful with the needle and we're just going to have a look at the back and make sure that that's fine still and I don't see any big problems I don't see any big problems in there so 
think we're fine. We'll go ahead and put it back in and then we'll, I'll show you how to put it back in and start from where I left off. So we clip it back in. Okay. And we're gonna check this thread up here and make sure that it's gonna behave nicely. Get it threaded again. Making sure we got all of our points. Oh, that needle don't want to load now. Okay, so check to be sure we've got everything right. Pull this out. <laughs> that string is hard to get a hold of in there. And then we're gonna cut it, and that didn't wanna work. My hat is too tall there, where that is, so I'm just gonna push it down a little bit. There it goes. The brim of the hat was in the way. Okay, so we're gonna hit resume because it didn't actually miss any stitches. I see them all there, and we'll see how it does. Yes, you do hear a bird. I have a baby chicken in my work area under a heat lamp. So right now it's doing a little bit of the outlining. Um, it's gonna do quite a bit of black. It says five minutes. So it's gonna jump around doing black outlining is what I'm guessing. baby bird is usually quiet, but in the evening like this, Hannah comes and gets it, plays with it, and so it starts yelling. Hope you can see that on the Kind of cool when it starts doing the definition stuff like this black it makes it where you can really see the design better just joining what we're doing is we're printing a hat or not printing embroidering a hat for left-handed body art 
And this is what we're putting on the hat. Um, just a smaller version of it. And we're about halfway through the process now. We had about 5,900 stitches and the total it has 13,625. Uh, so we're about halfway through. It goes pretty fast. This, we're already at 6,000 stitches now. What it's working on now is some little swirls that come off the edge of the design. Okay, so now um, our next color is white again. Right now it's putting in the, her uh, writing for her business name and then it'll go back and forth between black and white and it'll put the highlights in the words. And um, the person that digitized this for me uh, gives me all the thread colors and all that and she puts in like where all the stops are and what kind of stitches and all that. So you can't, you can't just take a picture and make it um, into embroidery you have to have it digitized for an embroidery machine so
um, that's what Erin did. She gave me her logo. And I have a lady that I've been working with to digitize, and she does it in about 24 hours. And um, so that, yeah, that's in there. So um, she says she can do almost anything as long as she can turn it into a picture. So, like right now, she's working on a photograph of a bearded dragon for me. It's somebody's pet. And she's turning that into a file for embroidery. So this black is putting in all the black in the in the word for her um, business name. And each of these is only supposed to take one or two minutes. So we're just going to be changing back and forth with black and white to finish this off. It's got everything done except all of the words. So. I'm not sure I like these, this, I like the thread just fine. I'm not sure I like the holders because I don't know if you can see that, that thread's getting all wound on there. And that's what was causing the problem on the machine because it gets um, ahead of itself and causes problems. So I keep having to cut it off. So if you have tips for me on that, that would be awesome because it just seems like a lot of wasted thread and I'm not complaining about the thread being too expensive or anything like that, but you have to buy it when it runs out. So if I can use most of it, that would be nice. It didn't feel right. So it didn't feel right because it's caught up here, which is good to notice now instead of later. Okay, so it just kind of likes to unwind itself. And I know people that have been sewing for a long time probably have tricks to keep that from happening. I know I keep mentioning give me tips, but since I'm so new at this, I would really appreciate them if they're out there. Now it's putting in the second word, so it's putting in the word art, the third word. And then we're going to change, and it'll do the highlights in it, and then it'll move up to the top word, the left-handed. you have us do a project for you and we have it digitized um, one of the things to keep in mind is to know what you want to put it on because each size 
you can resize it slightly, but um, you can't go from like four inch to six inch. That's two different um, files. And um, each one has a charge. So $25, $35, somewhere in there, um, depending on how difficult it is. So um, when you start thinking about this, and you want a project done, think about what all you would want to put it on so that you pay for the maximum, you get the maximum benefit out of it, is what I'm saying. Um, so like a left-handed chest patch and the hat can be resized fairly easily. So if you wanted shirts, that might be a nice way to go because then you're only paying for um, one digitization instead of multiples. If you want it, like a big chest one and a hat, that's two different digital files. For me, just to give you an idea, um, this does not include the digital file, but for a hat, unless it's a special high-priced hat or something like that, I charge $25 for hats, $25 for regular-sized t-shirts, um, and $29 for large t-shirts, just to keep the like 2x to 4x, 5x. Um, so some of them, if they're if it's a much higher count than you know about 15,000 stitches the price might go up a little bit because it just takes so much more time but just to give you a general idea um, for a hat $25 plus the cost of a digital file if you don't already have one This is where it would be nice to have the machine with lots of needles because then you're you're not changing it every time. You load it the first time with your needles and you're done until the end. Unless you have something that has more colors than you have needles. Okay, thank you. I'm almost done with this in my life. I'm on the last few stitches. Miss Hannah made dinner, so she's letting me know it's almost done. That's good timing, because we're almost done.
We're up to 10,029 stitches now. We have 13,625 total. So we're, un we're about 3,600 stitches left, which won't take long. I think we only have a couple more color changes. Something doesn't feel right there. Let's try this again. I'm learning that when I thread it, if something doesn't feel right, stop right then because it's probably not right. There's a spot up on top of this where it can get caught and it makes it feel tight before it should. So. When I feel that, I'm learning to stop and pull it out and redo it right so I don't get stopped. in all the color changes and stuff and that makes it where you know it's longer so it's it's about an hour total for this one and um, so you, you just can't do the same number that you can do with if you had the big one I thought I could be smart and put that on with the thread with the little adapter without taking the adapter off, but that didn't work. down to this color change and one more black and then it'll be finished.
And last color change. So we'll go ahead and wrap the white up and put it away. Get our black put on here. And then we'll put the finishing touches on and then we'll just have some little trim work and clean up to do on the back. Okay, this one says um, about three minutes. So we're at the end of our stitches here. So we're gonna hit, okay, we're finished. We're gonna lift that up. I'm gonna pull this thread out and put it away. I like to do that so it doesn't get tangled or dusty or anything. Okay, so let's unhoop this guy. Got the back up. Gently pop that off and work it out. Okay, so let's show you what we got going on here. Shrink that back down. So there's our hat. Um, let's take it apart. Yeah. 
face you guys down a little bit more so you can see better. I'm just gonna pull that off the sticky. Get this hoop off of it. See, that's how things end up on my floor in the abyss. So we're just gonna get all this pulled off the sticky. Put that over there. Okay. Let's take our tape off. So the way this stuff works is it's tear away. So the best way to do it is to hold your finger over your print and you just start with the first layer and just it literally just tears away. And you're not going to get every bit of it the first time, but if you can just kind of tear around the edges and um, get it started, you can go back and pick the rest off of it so it looks clean afterwards. And we'll just fold it back so that it's right. Fasten that back up. So I have to go in and I have to trim these little um, threads. They're called jump threads that go from one part to another. I hand trim all that front and back and just um, do everything I can to make it look as clean and professional as possible. And then we'll deliver it tomorrow. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. And if you have tips, please feel free to leave them. Um, I appreciate them. You guys have a good night.